We already made a video about the most unique ground vehicles we have in the game. The Soviet missile tank, the American SPG, armed with no less than six 106mm recoilless rifles, and many others. Now it's time to look up and see all the amazing and weird aircraft designs that real military history and War Thunder have to offer. <laughs> Let's go! Let's kick it off by speaking about aircraft. Built by joining two airframes together, no big deal. Take a look at the BF-109 Zilling, a German premium fighter, and the American F-82 twin Mustang. The Zwilling, which means twin in German, was created when German engineers tried to make a new heavy fighter by combining two fuselages of the BF-109. Those fuselages weren't even heavily modified. The airframe was strengthened, the wing forward structure was modified a bit, one of the cockpits was fared over, and that was basically it. The new aircraft was not very agile, but could carry quite a lot of guns. Four Mark 108 30mm cannons. That's quite a lot of firepower. That said, the Zwilling never made it to the production line, while its American counterpart actually did. The twin Mustang incorporating two lengthened P-51H fuselages was initially intended as a very long-range escort fighter. That's why the earliest models retained both fully functional cockpits so that pilots could fly the aircraft from either position, alternating control on long flights. Unsurprisingly, the twin Mustang proved to be an excellent escort aircraft and even established a world record for the longest non-stop flight ever made by a propeller-driven fighter. It flew non-stop from Honolulu to New York without refueling, covering a distance of around 5,000 miles. In combat, the F-82 was no slouch either, relying on its powerful armament and decent rate of climb. Another curious development of that era comes in the form of a rocket-powered aircraft. Here's the most well-known rocket-powered design of the time. The magnificent ME-163 Comet, the German tailless interceptor. This is a perfect plane to climb to your operational altitude right at the start of the match and get to hunting enemy bombers right away. The team behind the Comet, including the legendary aeronautical engineer Alexander Lipisch, spent around five years designing the aircraft. Thanks to its swept wing, it still handled pretty well even at transonic speeds, allowing it to exceed 1000 kph during testing. All of that really impressed the Imperial Japanese Army Air Service. They bought the rights to license produce the aircraft, but the submarine carrying the airframe was sunk on its way to Japan. So the Japanese were forced to make their own copy of the ME-163, the Ki-200, using German documentation. The attempt wasn't successful though. The aircraft didn't make it past the testing stage. The Germans and the Japanese weren't the only ones working on rocket-powered aircraft. The Soviets had their Berezhneyak SCF, rocket-powered interceptor in the works since the start of the war as well. It had a crazy rate of climb for its time, but as tests showed, its unswept wing, traditionally used on piston engine designs, made the aircraft almost impossible to control at transonic speeds, barring it from going into actual large-scale production. Next up are the American XP-55 Ascender and the Japanese J7W1 Shinden, two unusual canard-based designs. This kind of configuration can allow for much better maneuverability during a stall, and a better control of the main wing airflow in general. But there is also a big price to pay for that as well, with a lot of designs of this type being rather tricky to control. All in all, both the Ascender and the Shinden failed to outshine their more conventional competition and were only ready when jet-powered aviation was already becoming a thing. 
The German Dornier 335 Heavy Fighter is another interesting aircraft with a rather unorthodox aerodynamic design. Dornier mounted one engine in the nose and the other in the tail in a unique low-drag push-pull configuration. The French tried to do a similar thing while working on a bomber, but the Germans opted instead for a heavy fighter aircraft and created one of the fastest heavy fighters of World War II. With very low aerodynamic drag and two engines, meaning that it had the excellent performance of a single engine design while also enjoying all the benefits of actually having two engines, like being able to fly to safety with only one of them intact. When talking about unusual vehicles, it's hard to forget the HO229, also known as the Gotha Go 229. This aircraft is immediately recognizable thanks to its iconic flying wing layout, removing the need for a tail and its control surfaces. The Horton brothers spent years designing a plane with good handling and low takeoff and landing speeds, and this effort was not in vain. The Ho-229 was very maneuverable, especially for a jet-powered aircraft. It also could carry two Mark 103 30 mm cannons, enough firepower to even shred through some tanks. The last vehicle on display today is the Tandem MAI, or SH Tandem a Soviet experimental ground attack aircraft. It featured an unusual tandem wing, allowing for an even distribution of weight between front and rear sections, meaning that more ordnance could be installed in the airframe. The tailplanes were as large as 45% of the wing area, with elevators serving as ailerons at the same time. Unfortunately, the results of its tests were rather disappointing, revealing quite a few issues with the design. Nevertheless, this aircraft can still be flown in War Thunder where it found its niche as a rare event vehicle. All aircraft we discussed today might look peculiar, but every single one of them can prove their worth in battle. They were built this way not because the designers wanted to stand out, but because they were trying to build an even better plane, more advanced kind of a combat plane, and were ready to take risks. Have you ever flown any of these designs? If so, what's your favorite? Tell us in the comments below. Please, we'd love to know.